Welcome to the Daytime Show. I'm Michael Knight, and I'm joined by poetry experts Nadia Swanson and Dick Pepperfield. How you going, Dick? I'm pretty good, Michael. How are you? Yeah, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. How's my esteemed colleague, Nadia? I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty excited to be here tonight. That's good. That's great. All right, let's get this underway. <laughs> okay, so the first poem we'll be taking questions about tonight will be Michael Dransfield, Pass de Dieu for Lovers. Wait, wait, wait. You mean Pass de Dieu for Lovers? Oh, yes, of course, that. <laughs> All right, so our first question, we will go to the douchebag in the blue hat. What do you have to say? Yeah, Jay Swizzle here. What's this poem actually about, bro? You hear me? That's an interesting question. I'd say it's about love and how it can be complicated. It sounds easy to walk away from love, but actually, it's quite difficult. So, yeah, I guess you could say, love is in the air. I guess you could. I guess you could say that, yeah. <laughs> okay, the next question. You in the middle there, please. Hello, Grant Massingham from the Daily Digest. Um, just wondering what the themes are in this poem. And what's he saying about them? Thank you. Over to Michael to take this question. That's, that's quite an interesting question, Grant. Like, I think what it's really trying to say, like, the themes in this poem, love and interpersonal connections, but it's more than that. What Dranfield's trying to say is how love isn't just this one-dimensional, single-layer thing. It's not black and white. It's got more. Do you ever wonder why they call it making love? Mm, that's no. an interesting question. Why? Well, I think it's because you have to make love work. It's not something natural, something easy. Yeah. It's about commitment and sacrifice. It's something you've got to keep working at. It's always a challenge, but you've got to keep fighting that good fight. That's, that's just what I think, personally. I'm no, no poetry expert, but that's what love is to me. That's a beautiful and, question. And I love all of you. And that's a beautiful answer. It's a pretty deep answer right there. Oh, Great. thank you, thank you. All right, do we have another question lined up? Oliver Dingus here from the Golston High School Grapevine. I'm just wondering what some of the themes are in this, and are there any techniques about them? Thank you. See, now, that's quite an interesting question. Themes, that's a tricky one. I think Dick here is our theme expert. Ah, oh. do you think you'd be able to find some themes and techniques to go with it, Dick? Absolutely. So, first of all, I'd say this poem's about love. That's the primary theme, of course. right? And so, Michael Transfield, the poet, pervades this love through his use of imagery. In the poem, he states, yet, yeah, how the first light makes gold her hair. Oh, I love that line. It shows the reflection in the little things about her. I'm sure you agree. Oh, of course. Like how love's not this big romantic gesture. It's about the little things, the things that count. That's right. The small things that make love exactly what it is. Make gold her hair. Oh, exactly. How the, like the way the light shines off her hair. It's something so beautiful, but only captured in that one moment. With that image. It's, it's amazing. So the next technique in this poem, I would say, is... That's a rhetorical question, I would say. Oh, of course, very <laughs> insightful. It's not used a lot in modern poetry. It's but really not, it's, no. it's nice to see it making a comeback. Yeah. Did you read the, out the clue? Yeah, in the poem, he says, How then shall I leave, and where away to go? It's, this shows how he's reluctant to leave this, this woman, and he doesn't know where to go if he would leave. Like, he's struggling to walk away from this love. Where did you get that apple, Dick? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, all apples aside, I think, rhetorical question, it's a really, it works well in this poem, don't it's you think? It's a strong technique. Yeah, I really, I really like yeah. it. It's, it's always good, because, you know, it gives you that, whoever's reading the poem, they get that, that drawn-in-ness, that, for want of a better about word. what's happening. Yeah, it puts them in the poet's shoes, like, how they think about their experience with love, and if what they would do in that situation. Would they walk away? Would they stay? How would they struggle with the struggles of love? I completely agree. There's one more technique I managed to find in the poem. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're going well. Enjambment. You can oh. see it throughout the entire poem. Typical Michael Durant. Yeah, it's just jerky. It makes stop-start things. It makes you stop and think about what he's really saying. Almost like the start of a new love. That's right. That, that's very cl very deep, yeah. yeah. Very good. I like this. I like this guy. Get him a nice. sandwich. 
represents like the start of a new relationship, and then the full stops kind of stop the end of the old ones, you know? I, I see what you're saying. Like, yeah. in the first phases of a new love, it can be awkward. It can be hard to find that rhythm, that flow, that interconnectedness between two people. You do this, I do that. But as you go through the poem, you get that exact same feeling as if you're you're at the start of a new love yourself. That's yeah. that's but really insight. That's beautiful. The step of two for lovers. Of course. Well, that's really good. That's right. All right, I think we've got another audience question now. Yeah, Brew, me again. How's this actually linked to his other poem? Do you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> yeah, Brew. <laughs> yeah. Another good question from Jay Sweet. Thank you. Very good. Biff, what do you think about how it links to his other poems, some of Dransfield's other works? I'd say it's about the personal connection and love. Of course, a lot of his work is about yeah. this this human psyche and how yeah. we as humans. A lot connect. of his other poems, yeah. yeah. It's written in a very similar style, actually. It's oh, very metaphorical. Links. Oh, yes. He's, he's a very metaphorical man. I'm surprised his name isn't Metaphor Dransfield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. oh Mike, you crack me up. Yes. Oh. You do. Oh. You, also, his and Jetman and Cezura, they just. Uh, that's, that's a big thing of Michael Transfield's, that in Jammin, all the time, it's jerky, but it works for him. He what? worky the jerky. Oh, oh dick. Uh. I'm dick. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think we'll have time for one more question from the audience regarding this poem. How about you, sir, with the dog? Is he, is he a is dog? dog? I don't know, let's, get, let's go to the question. Like the dog. Let's go to the question. Yes, Williamson here again. Could you compare and contrast this to one of his other poems? It would be greatly appreciated. Yes, a very insightful question. This one, this one's going to be tough to answer. I, like, I think Dick's got this one. Yeah. He's like, what would you like to compare it to, Dick? Um, I like his poem Ethnodome, which oh. coincidentally we'll be looking at later in the show. That's that's our next poem, of course. Yeah. Great choice, really. Yes. yes. Well, they both talk about connections. In Epidome, he uses the skin as a metaphor for a relationship. Ah, oh, of course. Yes. Whereas in this poem, he's talking about there, the relationship. Yeah, he talks about. That's right. He like, talks about. Rela the it's all about personal connection and whatnot. Like yes, it, it's really nice. But of course, they can't be exactly the same. Like, how do they differ? Ah, oh, they differ primarily through his use of the metaphor in the second. Ah, oh, of course. Yes. The metaphor of the, the skin. The skin. The epidome. Oh, human yeah. skin, of course. Yes. So that's a beautiful thing. You know, I always thought epidermis was your hair, but... No, oh. it's your skin, ah, like... Of oh. course. You got got by the Simpsons got you. Done goofed. Ah, you <laughs> done goofed, Mike. I done goofed. But, well, that was a very good question. Thank yes. you, Benedict. And uh, that's a very cute dog you got there. Alright, welcome back to our poetry special edition of the daytime show with me, Michael Knight. The next poem we'll be talking about is another Michael Drensfield special, Epiderm. And I really do think Miss Swanson here is an expert on this poem. What do you have to say about this? I think Epiderm is it's a really nice poem. It shows connections and it's yeah. it's really deeply felt emotion. Of course, like let's see what our audience has to say. Um that young student from earlier, I think he's got another question. Young man? Yeah, me again. Just wondering what this poem's about. I, I just couldn't get it. Thank you. Ah, oh, of course. Very good question. Nadia? I think the poem is about the human skin, as the title would suggest. Of Epiderm. Course. Or epidermis, oh. as in the scientific name. <laughs> Isn't that your hair? No, we thought we discussed this we discussed earlier. This yeah? earlier. Oh, I done goofed it again. You done goofed. That, that's okay. Keep going. It's Nadia. okay. It's about the persona feeling a connection with another person through the skin, to interactions and discovery. That that is that's beautiful. That's beautiful. It's like the whole poem. It's just this one big beautiful piece of skin. It's a piece of skin. The largest organ in the human body, ladies and gentlemen. That that's a that's a wonderful. Not poem. in my case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dick. Oh you crack me up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think we can go to another question now, but is that is that a celebrity in our audience? Is that Peyton Manning? I believe it is. Peyton? No way. 
You have a question for us. Hello, Peyton Manning from the Denver Broncos, number 18, quarterback. Just wondering what the themes are about this poem. And what's he saying about them? You hear me? You hear me? You hear me? Sit down. <laughs> oh, very insightful question, Peyton. I didn't know you were such a poetry man. It's quite a surprise. Could I take this one? Oh, of course Absolutely. you can. Absolutely. The theme of this poem is connection, as I said earlier. It's all about Dransfield making a statement that human connection is a, is a natural thing and that the skin is a vessel for this connection. Ah, oh, so like the connection is by the skin, but the skin makes the connection. It comes exactly. full circle. Exactly. It's an I don't believe it. It's something that happens when two people connect. Ah, I think I know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. We'll Another try to theme. keep it PG, of course. Yeah, Another of course. theme on this topic is physical love. Ooh. Through Ooh. this theme, Transville is saying that the physical love is essential and invigorating. It creates a connection between people and is a form of communication. I'm sure you know all about that connection, don't you, Dick? Of course I do, Michael. <laughs> Yes, well, that was a very good question. Thank you, Peyton. All right, so it appears we have another question from our little dog whisper in the front audience, and uh, we've had word back from security. That dog is A-OK. -okay. Over to you. Benedict Williamson from Forbes magazine. Just wondering what are some themes and techniques for this poem? Right, that, that's a that's a really good question. Thank you, Benedict. Uh, do we have any any feedback on that kind of question? I think connection is again the answer. Oh, it's prominent. Yes. It's a prominent one. Yeah, yeah. He's really he's a really connected guy, isn't he? He just loves his connection, like Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's represented when the line "I touch your skin," "I like to touch your skin." No, I know you do. <laughs> It's a personal statement which connects the persona to us, the audience, by using first person and direct speech. I like to touch your skin. I like oh, when you touch my skin. Let's try to keep it down <laughs> here, Dick. She is married, you know. Oh my god. <laughs> Along with this, <coughs> epiderm, the scientific name for skin, is also symbolic of connection. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. You got anything else? On I have another technique that represents this. It's personification in the line of merely notifies the brain of conversation with a stimulus. This line, I believe, is a simple representation of the central nervous system in the body, which provides More. perception and connection to the world around us. That's very interesting. That, that's it's nice. You've taken going back to that scientific approach. The scientific it shows Michael Dransfield's more than just a one-trick pony. He can science and poetry. We have that other double meaning of epidermis. Of course, it's, it keeps coming back. That skin, that connection, it's, it's beautiful. I have another. Oh, you brought a third? There's wow. three techniques that show connection. Two islets in a toll of each other. This metaphor is a representation of connections. The natural imagery of islets show the connection the persona is feeling. I would never have thought of it that way. That's, that's why you're the expert. It's, it's a you're natural the connection. These things all represent the theme of connection throughout the poem and signify how the persona feels connected naturally. Naturally? Naturally. It comes naturally. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I believe Peyton has another question. Oh, a great quarterback. Hello, Bad Manning again. Just wondering how this links to his other poems. Question? Yes. I'd say he links epiderm to his other poems through his continuous use of natural imagery oh, and the natural course. metaphors. That, that nature, he's all about yeah. nature. Yeah, they're very it's prominent through all of his all poems. All of his poems. That, it is a common theme. His love of nature and his use of love. It's quite inspiring. I love nature. And I love nature it. love. Of course you do, Dick. What else does he say about his links to other poems? Is, is that all? That's all. I believe that's all. Well, doesn't need to be summed up much. It's a 
perfectly natural thing. That's right. <laughs> All right, I'd say we have time for one more audience question. Uh, you in the middle there, what do you have to say? Yep, Grant again. Just wondering how you would um, compare this to one of his other poems. Very, very yeah. interesting question. Insightful question. Personally, I would say it's conflicting of Michael Drenchford's other poem, Prosperity. Oh, I love that poem. Mm. It's a personal it? favorite. That's yeah. so I'd say Prosperity is more about the development of land mm -hmm. rather than the connections between people, which is what Epidermis represents. Of course it is. However, Epiderm and Prosperity both have natural images that connect them and yeah, they, all that natural imagery. Similar. He, I can see that. He does love his natural imagery. They're similar in words like plant, flower, and blue. Oh, and beautiful. they're all natural words. They're like, all natural. They're found in both, but they both mean different things. Of course, they're used to represent, like, different things. And right. that shows Michael Dransfield's versatility as a poet, and why he'll go down as one of the great poets of our generation. If not the greatest. Well, personally, I feel honored to have had our two guests here on the show with us today. And can, Thank you, yes, can everyone give a big hand to Miss Nadia Swanson and Mr. Dick Pepperfield? Thank you. And good job, Dick. Thanks, Nadia. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Are we done? Yes, we're done. Okay. You know, Dranfield says, How then shall I leave and where away to go? Oh, that's that's quite a <laughs> 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 No! No! <laughs> where do we go? <laughs> okay. So the next tech the next tech Okay, come on, just yeah. So the next It's, it's not something that just comes straight away. You gotta work at it. It's about commitment and sacrifice. Making <laughs> <laughs> love come straight away. <laughs> Alright, Swanson, get out of the shot.